Now to be able to update the menu item, we first need to implement the API to update the menu item. If you go back to your backend projects and go into the views.py, remember that inside this view, we define the menu item details, uh, APIs with the view of update and destroy. So using this uh, RESTful API framework, uh, it's gonna handle the updating and destroying for us. If you go into the QR's menu backend and open the URLs, you can see that we already defined the menu item list and the menu item details. All right, so we're gonna use the API this for the updating menu item. So let's go back to our front end project. Let me just quickly close all of those. And first let's open the source and API.js. So in here, I'm going to export a new function named update menu item. And then we're going to pass the ID of that menu item, the data and the token, of course. So inside here, just return the request. The path would be uh, API slot menu items, all right, slot the ID. Now you can't just put the ID like this. Instead, you need to pass it in the format of dollar sign curly brackets and put the ID like this. Now, like I said before, once you use this uh, syntax, uh, you can't use the single quote or double quote. You have to use the back stick. All right, so I'm gonna remove this and using a back stick. All right, and then we're gonna pass the data token and the method of this is gonna be patch for the update. All right, he's safe. Now let's go to our source container and many form to add this into the API. So inside the import API, we're gonna import the update menu items. All right, once you've done that, just scroll down. And here we have the function for add category, function for on add menu item. And now just create the another one for on update menu item. Again, this one is asynchronous, so we might put the async, okay, like this. So here, first I'm going to create constant JSON equal a wait, and we're gonna execute the update menu item. And first we're gonna pass a couple of things. Uh, first the item ID, and then we're gonna pass the, an object, which is the uh, item object. Need to be say place. We pass a place of ID, and for the category, uh, the name, the price, description. All right, all of those we get it from uh, the state variable up here. And then image is available. We need to say is available. All right, this one is a bit different from the other ones because uh, uh, this is available. It's a key name of the item JSON file, and the variable here is a different. All right, so normally you can say category, 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 all right, but they are the same, so that's why we can put it shortcut just like this. But in this case, it's a variable, it's a different because uh, we name it like it's a variable. Uh, if you don't want to use this, you can name it to uh, is a variable, which is fine, all right? So I just uh, put it back. Just let you know the reason why we're using this. Okay, so then the next thing we need to pass is alf.token. All right, that's it. And then down here, we're going to say if we have the JSON returned back, then we're gonna display a uh, a few things. That means once we update successfully, first we're gonna display a toaster saying menu items, and we're gonna say the 
json.name uh, if you want we can put the console.lock.json data to see what it looks like was updated okay and then we're going to pass the type success all right so down here after you um, showing this we need to set the categories back to the default value all right it's sort of like the menu form you uh, need to reset the form back to the empty otherwise it's going to still display the data all right set name reset it set the price set to zero and set description set image set is available we set to false all right and then we say on done all right which we're going to uh, execute the callback name on done all right so let's scroll down below to the um, button all right so right now it's display uh, at menu item fixedly like this uh, we don't want that because uh, by default we have one menu item form in here and this is for creating but for this one it's for updating they are using the same form all right they are using the same menu form but this one is for updating and this one here is for creating so by somehow we need to differentiate those uses so back to this button because right now if you click on this button it's going to execute the add menu items so how can we handle this very simple uh, first i'm going to put this one on another row all right so in here we need to check if we have the item.id so that's mean we're going to updating an existing items then let's execute the on update menu item function otherwise execute this one all right then we're going to do the same thing first we need to check if item id has a value that's mean we are updating an existing item then display a text like update menu items otherwise we're going to display the add menu item all right he's safe all right now if you go to the uh, pages and going to the place.js and notice that here we use the menu item form inside the model and for this one is for the updating so that's why we're going to pass the item props into here but if you scroll up here on the right hand side we're still using the menu item form but this time we don't pass any item so this means this one is for creating the menu item and this one sorry this one is for updating an existing item so that's why we're going to pass the item props here all right so let's go back here um, everything should be fine but just in case i recommend to hit refresh and now if i click on this one and for the chicken wing we can name it to abc and the price we're going to set to um, 100 all right let's just say that and hit hey can you see that it just displayed the update menu item all right hit update uh internal server error so that's mean that's something wrong so let's go back to our um, terminal we don't see anything wrong in here and the error say internal server error so that's mean that's in something wrong in the server so let's go to the uh, back end project and immediately i can see that we have an error in the uh, terminal inside the backend project. Now the error say the menu item object has no attribute owner, and it give it a hint inside the permissions line 25. So let's go to the core permissions and go into line 25, which is this one. Okay, so let's see. 
All right, so for the place owner uh, customize permission, okay, I know what went wrong. If you open the uh, views.py, all right, so we are working on a menu items and we're using the permission class named place owner or read only. So because the menu item doesn't have the uh, attribute owner, if you could open the motors, the menu item linked to the place, all right, and the place linked to the owner. So there's no direct link from the menu item to the owner. They link together via place. So that's why inside the permission, um, here we need to say object dot place dot owner equal request. All right, it's going to check. All right, it's great to uh, to know how we can debug um, when the arrow comes up. All right, once we got that, so let's go back here. I might want to hit refresh and hit open this one. I'm going to say chicken wing ABC. This one, uh, let's just say 150. All right, just give it like that. Hit update menu. Hey, the menu item chicken wings ABC was updated beautiful and also if you go to the um, admin dashboard you go into the menu item just click on this and we clearly see that the menu item wings change the name to abc and the price is 150 beautiful but for some reason the title and the price here doesn't update it we have to hit refresh and now it's up there to ABC and 150. So why is that? That is because the state um, is still with the old JSON data and that we fetched previously when we first opened uh, this page. Now to get it show the new data automatically, uh, we need to fetch the new data from the server after we are done with the updating process. So the state data of this place will have a new value. Let me show you what I mean. So if you go into the uh, place.js, now let's go inside the model, all right? Inside the on done function here, uh, when you've done the updating, you just hide the model. We need to do more here. So I'm just putting inside a curly bracket for function, all right? It's a function, so that's why we use curly brackets. Now, before you hide the model, you're going to run the on fetch places. All right. So that's mean you're going to fetch the data from the server and then you hide the motor. And that's mean after that, you got a new fresh data. All right. Hit save. Now let's go back here. Let's just say right now, if I want to update this one back to ABC, just remove this one and change this one to 15. Hit update. Hey, can you see that update and immediately it just uh, update with the new text and new price without us reloading the page because once it's done, it just run the on fetch place. If you click on that one, that's mean you're going to call the fetch place to get the fresh data from the server and display here instantly. Beautiful. So let's move on to the last session of this task where we add the function to remove the category or the menu items.